Lord. And I am a great God to be greatly manifested in the midst of my people. And I say I'm not a God tonight that can be limited. For none can live in me, saith the Lord. That's right. I would say unto my people tonight, believe upon me tonight. For I shall show you salvation tonight, saith the Lord. But my spirit is made manifest in this place tonight. To reach down and find you where you would find yourself tonight, saith the Lord. If you find yourself in sickness tonight, I shall reach down into that sickness and I shall heal you, saith yes. the Lord. Yes. If you yes. find yourself of a yes. cold heart this night, yes. I am present to meet you where your Hallelujah. cold heart is and return Hallelujah. you back unto myself, saith yes. the Lord. If you find yourself oh, depressed, hallelujah. if you find yourself faint-hearted tonight, hallelujah. I am the Lord that shall make you strong yes, tonight. Amen. Yeah, I desire oh, to be hallelujah. made manifest tonight on the behalf of my people Praise as a great God. and a mighty God tonight. Hallelujah. Even as your salvation, oh, saith hallelujah. the Lord, Thank that I may become your victory. Oh, even this oh, night that you may know the victory of the Lord. For it shall not oh, be a man that shall loosen your bonds nor your chains, but hallelujah. it shall be I, the Lord, your God, and I oh, shall make a new person out of thee this night therefore yield yourself unto me tonight saith the Lord and I shall perform my word I shall even hasten to watch over it tonight to perform it on your behalf tonight that you may know what is the salvation of the Lord amen oh the Lord. yes Lord hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus Lord. Come again 
Chapter 40 of Genesis. Genesis chapter 40. And verse 20. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler, and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again, and he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forget him. And in Luke, there is a New Testament parallel. In the 17th chapter, verse 30, Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day he which shall be upon the housetop, and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away, and he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember, Lot's wife, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed, the one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. And they answered and said, said unto him, Where, Lord? He said to them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. God, I praise you tonight for the reading of the word. I want to be where the body is. Lord, I feel like I've stepped into the midst of that great body or some portion of it. God... If the body is here, that's where I want to be. But I don't want to be here with all my feathers pulled out. I don't want to be here bald as an eagle. But I want to be a well-feathered eagle, the prince of birds, one that flies the highest, that which soars the eastern skies. Hallelujah. Lord, let, all, let the king of all those who fly high be assembled together amongst the body here tonight. I thank you. By one spirit, we're all baptized in the one body. Now that we know this to be so, we praise you. And if we have not yet experienced that, that's why we're here, to get 
filled and baptized into. I thank you for victory. And everybody said amen. amen. Now you may be seated. <laughs> Tonight, do you feel like the most important part of your life is the preaching of the Word of God? Amen. I know that it is to me. From night to night, to night to night, out underneath the old tent, uh, I should say the new tent, we've been preaching the Word of God. And how many has been enjoying it? Now, I must ask you a question in case you hadn't heard or hadn't got around to it. You've heard till the last minute rush. That happens at Christmas and Easter or uh, toward the end of a tent revival. How many has not been out yet? Well, look at the hands that hadn't been out yet. Well, you got six more nights. Six more nights starting tomorrow night, Monday through Saturday. Don't look for us next Sunday afternoon because we won't be there. We will be in Sebring next Sunday. In fact, we'll be in Avon Park Sunday morning, Sebring Sunday night, starting the week of crusade in the Agri Civic Center, Highway 27 South. But if you had not been to the tent, brave the elements now. You know the Prince of Tampa is a cold weather devil. Say amen. And of course he won't mind getting warmed up after the crusade schedule is finished. But your grandfather used to brave the elements. Great granddaddy believed God or he died. Didn't have doctors to run to, didn't have all kind of medicine to take. He had to trust God or kick the bucket one, and it seems like he lived a good ripe old age. Say praise the Lord. So I'm admonishing you tonight. Now, revival is history before you know it. It can go by the boards before you realize it. And uh, this year may not be the last year you need to keep the rudiments of those things that are taught and received underneath an old tent. Say praise the Lord. <clears throat> So we, I want to uh, congratulate and thank and uh, appreciate all you folks that have been coming out. And even in spite of the weather, we've been having pretty good crowds out there. The old tent's been filled. So much for those who thought it would be a flop. It's been a huge success. Hallelujah. And it's not over yet. Give God a hand. It's not over yet. Well, I'm happy. While I'm speaking on the subject, I might just well give you a report as we are functioning as the uh, Department of Evangelism out of this church. Oh, you didn't know that. Let's give the Lord another hand. <laughs> Praise God. Now, someone says, well, I don't know if you folks amount to much. You just say, hey, we got a lot going for us. we got a lot of branches and departments, and uh, we're going to do things for God before Jesus comes. And let them chew on that for a while. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord has greatly blessed us, and the tent it was paid for before we put it up. Isn't that wonderful? And the Lord sent in just what needed to be. I had to borrow a little bit to finish it off, but he paid it back. Hallelujah. Next thing, we got a hold of three lights in the center part of the tent, the three center poles had uh, $300 lights on one per pole. And the Lord helped us to take care of that. Praise the Lord. And sitting outside the tent for the last three nights has been a brand new truck. Did you read about it in the magazine? The need for a new truck? Well, it's sitting there, and you know it's all but paid for. All but paid for. It cost us $4,100, and God gave us $3,500 to pay for it. Now, hallelujah. All that's left to pay on that truck, $600 more. Is that right? 41 minus 35 leaves 6. I'm not going to send it back. I'm not going to lose God's saints' money. I know he'll send me $600 and we'll own the truck, or rather I should say you'll own the truck, because we're just working for God's people, that's all. Now it's new to us, it's 1973, but it's in pretty good shape, all but the carburetor. That'll be fixed tomorrow, Lord willing. I'm not a mechanic, and don't you know I got the heebie-jabies when that thing started acting up, but uh, somebody that knew more about it than me said it's no real problem. Say amen. Now, aren't you glad God's doing things? 
People said it can't be done, and other folks didn't want us to do it, but we did it anyhow. Say amen. Aren't you glad? Listen, if you don't want God to move, he's going to move anyway. You might just want well to get out of his way and let him move. Because if God don't use you, he'll just set you on a shelf, raise up someone else, they'll take your place, and he'll use them. Hallelujah. You decree a thing, and God will bring it to pass. And this year, there's a schedule from now to the end of the year already in the different cities across the United States where we'll be having two major tent crusades each month. So that it ties up 22 days of tinning. The rest of the month, we are able to go to a church or an auditorium for a day or two. And we certainly won't rust out, will we? How many believes it's better to wear out? Hallelujah. Well, that's the way things are going, and how many is glad you're part of it? Aren't you glad you're part of it? And every dollar or every prayer or every meal you fast, I believe, can win another soul. We've seen a lot of souls get saved here this week. and I spent the afternoon out there for a solid hour praying for dope addicts, sinners, people that didn't know, have a clue about salvation. And I gave an altar call and nobody came. I said, I'm not going to have this. I can look in the Holy Ghost and see who's saved in this tent and who isn't saved in this tent. And when I took one look and saw who wasn't, I went after them. <laughs> Say praise the Lord. Someone said, that's not Bible, Brother Fred. Oh, yes. He said, go out to the highways and to the byways and the streets and lanes of the city and compel them to come in. So we have two ways of having an altar call. We have the first one by invitation. And the second one by ear. We go and get them by the ear. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I may risk my reputation, but I'm not worried about that. I may not get popular, but that doesn't concern me either. I'll do anything I have to to see you escape the damnation of hell and the lake of fire. And in heaven, you'll rejoice that somebody had a backbone enough to go and wrestle you as a brand from the burning. Of some, of course, it's different with different people. Of some have compassion, making a difference. Others you save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Hallelujah. My house is full, Sylvia sings, but my fields are empty. There's a lot of churches in the country today that are packed to capacity, but it's hard to get anybody to go out in the field. Oh, they like to get up the table. Hallelujah. You remember old uh, Brother Mephibosheth? He was so lame, but he still ate at the table every day. He couldn't get up and serve the king, though, but he could eat at the table. <laughs> Fellow up in Kentucky said, I'm doing tolerably well. And somebody said, uh, what's that mean? Oh, he said, that tolerably well means you're well enough to eat all right, but you're not quite well enough to work yet. <laughs> Say Hallelujah. <laughs> I believe if you can never fill a pulpit and never go across the sea or evangelize or go to the next town, you can go to the next door. You can go to the grocery store. You can go to the laundromat. You can order yourself some tracks if you don't know how to introduce yourself. Pass them on and they'll look at it and gulp a couple of times and while they're losing their mind and breath, you can start in on them. Say praise the Lord. Are you happy? I believe that if we're going to sit around the table tonight and feed on God's Word, we better be willing to go out in the field tomorrow. Say praise the Lord. Are you happy? Glory to God. I'm reminded of that farmer that hired this fellow. They were going to go haying. And he said, well, I've got to eat breakfast for a go. <laughs> Hallelujah. And all right, farmer sat around waiting for him to eat breakfast. He said, you know, while I'm here in the house, I might just go eat dinner. I won't have to come back for dinner. And now he waited for him to eat breakfast, and then on top of breakfast, immediately he ate dinner. Now the farmer said, we're overdue now. Quick, let's go. The sun's getting hot, and you're supposed to make hay when the sun shines. He said, oh, just a minute, uh, Mr. Farmer. I got an idea. I might just as well eat supper too, and then we can work all day. So he ate his breakfast, his dinner, and his supper, and the farmer lost an hour or so and said, well, if you're finally ready, we might make up for a lost time because we won't have to come back to the house for dinner and supper. Well, after he ate the third meal, which was his supper, he stretched and yawned. 
And the farmer turned around, and all at once he was gone. And he heard him thumping around upstairs. He ran up the stairs and said, Would you please come on? We've got to get going. We've got a lot of hay to make in. Uh, what are you doing up here? He said, Oh, Mr. Farmer. He said, I always go to bed after supper. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. So I say tonight, let us not rest until we see many souls entering into his rest. Harvest is ripe. Pray that the Lord of the harvest will send forth what? Laborers. That's hard to come by. We have an age and a generation where people don't want to work too hard, but they want to get a great salary. Laborers, those who will toil in the harvest. Amen. And that is uh, also local. That is anywhere where you can go and reach yourself. You may not have enough uh, money to put a gallon of gas in your tank, but you can still work in the harvest. You can still take a few steps and go someplace and do something. Well, is that a pretty good exhortation? Good. Now I'll take you back, way back, to a generation and a time that you were more relaxed with because, you know, it doesn't apply to you. Hallelujah. Back in Pharaoh's day in Egypt when Joseph was in the jailhouse. However, all these things happen for our example and for our admonition that we should not also err therein, the Bible said. Now, Joseph had a problem. He was a pet. He was the pick of the litter. He was daddy's favorite boy. And you know about daddy's favorite, favorite boy. Sometimes it's hard for him to adjust. He's been petted and pampered and coddled so much that when it comes time for him to stand on his own two feet, he has a hard job coping with society. Hallelujah. Well, go ahead and shout the victory. Praise the Lord. Go away. And so Joseph became a type of Christ, but what happened was he went all the way down, so there was no other place to go but all the way back up. But here's where he went. He went down to see his brothers, and they uh, took him and cast him down into a pit. They took him out of the pit, and they sold him to a bunch of uh, traders as a slave, and they carried him down to Egypt. He went down to Potiphar's house. He went down to be falsely accused of Potiphar's wife. And then finally he got thrown in the prison, and he was as far down and low down as he could get. How many knows it's pretty hard to get any lower than in the jailhouse? Well, do you think that this man quit his ministry because he went to jail? I've been to jail. Don't look at me cross-eyed. I went to jail three times in one year. Somebody said, what'd you do, Brother Freddie? Did you rob a bank or stick up a gas station? No, I just preached the gospel. And one old devil came after me and said, you're disturbing my peace? Of course, I knew that. <laughs> Say hallelujah. In every instance, it was a, one instance, it was a, a great big hulk of a man that said, I'm going to put you under the jailhouse if you preach one more night. I said, I'm sorry, sir. I'll do my best. But I ain't going to quit preaching every night. Hallelujah. He was twice as big as I was, and I felt kind of frail and shaky when I looked at him, but I gripped my teeth and said, I'm gonna, I've got to preach anyhow. These people are expecting healing, salvation, and deliverance, and I've got to do it. And did you know they carried me over to the Bartow Jail in 1967? Say amen. That's right. And did you know within one year that great big hulk of a man that lived several blocks from the tent and folks closer to the tent was enjoying it, that big hulk of a man was a very small shell of a man just before he died within a year for cancer brought him down and he dropped dead of a cancer. Say hallelujah. And there was this bootlegger that was in cahoots with the mayor up in uh, Live Oak, Florida back that same year. And he was in the insurance business too and they were running white lightning in the county because uh, that Swanee County, you know, that was a dry county at the time. Hallelujah. And they didn't like the way those drunks was getting delivered. Say praise the Lord. And they pulled it off again. Hallelujah. But just because I sat in the cubicle and I couldn't even get turned around, at least they could have given me a good sell. 
I didn't even stay overnight. In fact, I didn't stay one place but an hour, another place five minutes, but I was there. Hallelujah. When I <coughs> looked around, I didn't get discouraged. I just kept, la I had a laugh. And I laughed and I laughed. The joy of the Lord overwhelmed me. Hallelujah. Well, I didn't think about quitting my ministry just because I hit the jailhouse now. Hallelujah. Neither did Joseph quit his ministry because he went clear to the bottom and hit the jailhouse. What got him there? His dreaming, his interpreting dreams. Brother, there's a ministry in that. Some dreams come from God. Other dreams are just beans and sauerkraut. Say praise the Lord. But he had prophesied in his dream how that all the sun, moon, and stars had bowed down to his star. Remember? How all the sheaves had bowed to his sheaf and it made his brothers mad. Ooh, no wonder they sold him down the river. While he was in jail, he felt bad that he was falsely placed there. But one thing was for certain, he never quit his dreaming, and he never quit his interpreting. The thing that got him in the jail, he kept it up while he was in the jail. And brother, when you hit the lowest, you're not supposed to quit doing the thing God's called you to do, because if it gets you down there, it'll get you back out of there too. Hallelujah. Amen. I said, if your ministry is powerful enough to get you in jail, it's power enough, powerful enough to get you back out of jail. Amen. So now, one morning, a fellow woke up and rubbed his eyes and said, I've dreamed a dream. And I don't know the interpretation. I, I'm so upset and so sad. And his name was Mr. Butler. How many remembers the butler and the baker in the jailhouse with Joseph? And Joseph took a look at that boy and said, I know we're all in the same boat, but why are you looking so sadly today? What do you got mule face religion for? What have you got a hard luck story concerning? But I've had a dream and I just don't know what it means. Do not interpretations belong to God, said Joseph. Do you believe interpretations belong to God? This Bible is of no private interpretation. There is no person here tonight that owns any gift of the Holy Ghost. You just can't get up and turn off and turn on like a faucet. Hallelujah. If interpretation of tongues belongs to God, then all the other gifts belong to God. What did Joseph say? Do not interpretations belong to God? That's just like someone says, I believe in the gifts of the Spirit, uh, two of them. Tongues and interpretation of tongues. And then there's another party that was conveniently saying, I believe in seven or, or most of the gifts of the Spirit, but I don't like tongues, and I don't like word of knowledge. Hallelujah. That's exactly what they said. That is because they thought they had all the Holy Ghost they needed when they got saved and didn't need to get the baptism. Hallelujah. And they didn't want the word of knowledge working around them because they would let the cat out of the bag and spill the beans on them. There wouldn't be any hiding place down here no longer if that gift ever started operating on them. Hallelujah. But the rest of them, fine, fine, prophecy, fine, uh, miracles, healing, fine, word of wisdom, discerning spirits, fine. But there's a couple of them they don't want, but if you're going to take one of them, you can take all of them. Is that right? There are nine gifts of the Spirit. In the book of Thessalonians, it's, it's said, despise not prophesying. Is prophecy a gift of the Spirit? Then can you just take one of the nine gifts and, and say, don't despise that one? Or do you have to say, don't despise any of them? But they're all equal, even though tongues may be the least of them. So you can't despise any of them. So Joseph said, it belongs to God. Now tell me, <laughs> get a load of this. Tell me, he said, what your dream was. First he says, interpretation belongs to God. Then he says, tell me what your dream was. <laughs> Hallelujah. He was expecting God to come on him. He wasn't about to quit the thing that had put him in the jail. It would get him back out again too. So now he said, I had a dream, said Brother Butler. I dreamed that there was a vine appeared in front of me that had three branches. And the blossoms budded and quickly developed into fruit. I picked the fruit, I mashed them into a cup by way of juice, ripe grapes, forming wine, and I placed the cup into Pharaoh's hand. I don't know what it means. Oh, said 
Joseph with the same gift that got him into jail operating while he was in the jail. It also operated when he got out of jail too and interpreted Pharaoh's dreams. <laughs> he said, this is the interpretation. Listen close. The three branches are three days. In three days, Pharaoh is going to restore you to your ministry as a butler in the palace. You will take the cup and put it into Pharaoh's hand. And you know what came to pass? I said it came to pass. Hallelujah. In three days was Pharaoh's birthday. Do you believe the third day that Jesus rose from the grave? Well, brother, he had his birthday there in that manger in Bethlehem. He's about to have his wedding day any day now. Hallelujah. And as far as his funeral day, his death day, that'll never be. He's had that already on the third day, and now he's alive forevermore. There are three bells in everybody's life, the day they're born, the day they get married, and the day they die. Those are the three outstanding uh, parts of their life, and Jesus has gone through, will have gone through them all just as soon as the trumpet sounds. <laughs> Wave your hand in victory. Say, I love you, Jesus. Praising God. <sighs> Glory. Here is the Lord working through Joseph. And he says in three days, Pharaoh's going to restore you. Now, what is a butler? He's a servant. How many servants of God are with us tonight? Don't you want to serve God? Don't you want to be in your ministry too? Don't you want to take the cup, which speaks of what? The will of God. And put it into the king's hand? Do you? Hey, how about that cup? The Bible says Jesus prayed in the garden with sweating great drops of blood. Let this cup pass for me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. The cup is the will of God. Can you drink the cup? Hallelujah. Why? Can we sit at the left and right in your kingdom, said James and John? Are you able to drink the cup that I am going to drink? Huh? I have a baptism to be baptized with. And what will I? He said, uh, how am I straightened until it be performed? I've come to kindle a fire on earth, and what will I have it already be kindled? He said, you've got a cup to drink. It's the will of God. But tonight, whatever the cup is he gives you, can you drink it? Whatever bitterness or whatever sweetness you've got to go through, can you stand it? This servant went back to the king with the cup, which is the will of God, and placed it into Pharaoh, Pharaoh's hand. Pharaoh speaks to the king. King of kings and Lord of lords. That's Jesus' name tonight. And can you turn the will of God back over into his hand? Or are you going to try to take the law in your own hands? Say praise the Lord. Wave your hand in victory. Now how many appreciates God's word? Hang in there and dig a little deeper. Thank God. There's the cup. Now, a butler is a servant. I'm not going to call you servants forever, Jesus said. Pretty soon I'm going to start calling you sons. He said, because a servant does not know what his Lord is doing, but the sons know what's going on. Now, how many sick and tired of not knowing what God's doing in some of these meetings? <laughs> Amen. If you don't know what's coming off and what God's fixing to do in the Holy Ghost, it's because you're not a son, you're a servant. Now, it's good to be a servant, but it's just a little bit classier to be a son. Now, I'll show you the difference between a servant and a son. A servant has to knock on the back door and holler through the screen and say, Please, sir, can I have a sandwich? But a son walks through the front door and slams it, opens the fridge, and makes his own sandwich. Say hallelujah. I said it's a step up to be a son rather than to be a servant. Say praise the Lord. Now, it certainly came to pass in three days. Now, what is the application for 1981? The vine is Jesus Christ. Is he the true vine? Does he have three branches? He came as a prophet. He is now in heaven as a priest. He'll soon be back to earth as a king. Have you never heard tell how God have anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, both prophet, priest, and king? Hallelujah! Are you budding forth and blossoming? Hey, are you turning water into wine? Have you the miracle of conversion yet? Praise the Lord. And can you put the cup back into the king's hand and say, Thy will be done. And if I can't carry on unless I drink this cup, then Jesus, I'll drink it. Now, Brother Baker woke up the next morning and he said, 
Boy, that sounds good. Sounds like pieces and cream to me. That's a good interpretation. Oh, boy, I had a dream too. Now that I see how the dreams are going these days, I am going to try to get an interpretation of my dream. What works for one may not work for the other. Say amen. Brother, you've got to fit the pattern. You've got to come through uh, the testing. You've got to qualify. And did you know? He said, I've had this dream. Well, do not interpretations belong to God, said Joseph. Tell me the dream. I dreamed that I was walking along with a white basket on the top of my head. And on top of that basket was another basket. On top of that basket was another basket. I had a triple-decker, three baskets on the top of my head. In the top basket, it was filled with dainties, baked meats, cakes and pies and cookies and peaches and cream. And here came all these fowls of the air. And how many knows what the fowls of the air speaks of? Demons. The birds of the air speaks of demon powers. And the beasts of the field speaks of what? Sons of Belial. Inordinate people. Uh, stubborn, rebellious, heathen, brute beasts. Amen. All through the scripture. Th these are types. Hallelujah. The beasts of the field speaks of uh, people that's unregenerate and fighting God. And the demon, the, the birds of the air, demon spirits. Now, while I looked into the dream, here came some birds are flying in and they went pick, 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 and they ate up everything in the top basket. What does it mean? Oh, said Joseph, for in three days, oh, yeah, 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 that sounds just like the first interpretation. In three days, Pharaoh, yes, is going to lift up your head. Oh, goody, goody, goody. He's going to lift up my head just like he did the... Uh, the butlers. For he did have a birthday in three days and threw a party and invited them and exalted the both of them. But just because somebody sets you up doesn't mean they're not going to let you down. I mean, it's a little bit leery of getting set up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. All of a sudden, he said, what does it mean? In three days as thou art at the party and shall be lifted up, Pharaoh is going to hang you from the highest tree. Woo! Oh, I wish I didn't have that dream. I wish I didn't ask for that interpretation. I wish I didn't let that gift operate. I wish I hadn't asked God what that meant. But when you ask God what something means and you find out, brother, you're accountable. Hallelujah. Brother, it'd be better never to know the truth than to know it and reject it. Be better never to make a vow than to make one and not keep it. Ha! For you've opened your mouth unto the Lord, you know. <laughs> Had nothing to do with the rest of us. By your words you're justified, or by your words you are condemned. Hallelujah. And he said, hang me, yes. And in three days, the baker was hung. Now what will set one man free and restore him to his ministry will turn right around and hang another man nail his hide to the barn door. How many can understand this preaching tonight? Now some of you will take this message and shout victory over it. Others will slump down in your seat and hide behind somebody's head and say, oh, that hurts. You're getting hung, see. Hallelujah. Or you're being restored onto your ministry, see. Hallelujah. How many can say, wave your hands and say, God help me to say, in three days it came to pass that they hung the baker. Do you know why they hung the baker and not the butler? The butler's a servant. But the baker was a cook. Wasn't he? How many know some of these cooks? Always cooking up something. Say amen. Stirring up something. Mixing up something. Uh, conglomerating something, just getting it all running together, and just making a, a sticky mess. Hallelujah. And here is this old baker just stirring up stuff all the time and cooking up some stuff. And after a while, you know, you just can't keep that stuff up till it catches up with you. 
Brother, you make a pit, dig a pit, you're liable to be the fellow that falls in it. Come on, Haman, don't you build no gallows for Mordecai because you'll be hung on the very gallows that you build. Say praise the Lord. Surely the net is spread in vain in the sight of any bird. Glory. Here is the baker. He's hung. What's the application today? The application is there are three vessels on top of your head too, but don't start filling the top one. I said there's three heavens. Amen. Don't you want to get caught up to the third one? How many knows that if you're going to start filling vessels, you don't ever start at the top? If you're going to be, have a solid foundation underneath you, you're going to have to start at the bottom and fill the bottom vessel. I said there are three stages to eternal existence, life in the flesh, life out of the body as a soul in the spirit world, and thirdly, life in the glorified body. That's the third stage of eternal existence. You're looking at a boy that's in the first stage. He's not glorified yet. Hallelujah. Now these fowls of the air will come along and pick up the good seed of the word that falls upon fallow ground, hard ground, or in the top basket that has no lid nor protection. <laughs> and when we get to the next stage of our existence, we can fill our soul with good things in the glory world when Jesus calls us. And then in that glorified body, that new body that can embrace both worlds. Hallelujah. You and I will be filled, overflowing. No demon will touch you there. Thank God. Now there's people that are whitewashed. There's other people that are washed white. These baskets were whitewashed. Hallelujah. They were whitewashed baskets. All empty except the top. And that was unprotected. And the devil had a heyday. Are you listening? So, while we're existing, let's fill this vessel down below. Don't you want to? Hallelujah. In fact, when we get filled, let's not just fill up with peaches and cream and uh, sincere milk of the word, but let us get filled with strong meat that belongeth unto those who are of full age. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? I'm happy. And did you know the butler was restored? The baker was hung. Over in the New Testament, Luke 17, we hear that in the day that the Son of Man is revealed. Do you believe this is that day that the Son of Man is to be revealed? Do you believe we're in the generation of his coming? Let not him that's on the house top come down from his house to haul his stuff out of his house. Did you know that some folks could never work for God? They got too much junk in their house. Say amen. When they do get up on the housetop, somebody gives them a good calling down and down they come. One day, old Sanballat and Tobiah said, come on down here, Nehemiah, we're going to have a council session, board meeting. He hastily, Nehemiah hastily scribbled a note and sent it back to those uh, Syrians and said, Samaritans, he said, listen, I'm doing a great work and I cannot come down. But if you're starting to do something for God, don't let nobody call you down, uh, pull you down, drag you down, or talk you down. Hallelujah. So when you're on the housetop in the day that the Son of Man is to be revealed, don't run down and try to drag your stuff out of your house. Just leave it alone. Hallelujah. Peter, as long as he stayed on the housetop, had great visions of three-cornered sheets and all manner of things that had been cleansed by the power of God. <laughs> My, didn't he eat. <laughs> Say praise the Lord. Oh, glory, you're happy. Let not him that's on the housetop come down to take his things out of his house. There's some people, if he ever called you to go do an errand for him, you'd have to have seven or eight tractor-trailer trucks to haul it all with you. My, if we had the money that some women's got tied up in shoes that lays underneath their bed collecting dust, my, wouldn't we have a missionary tour? Say praise the Lord. I said, some folks got so much materialism all tied up in their house that when they come down off the housetop, they, all, they get all tangled up once they get down out of the Spirit, all caught away with their problems, and they can never go and do anything for God in the day that the Son of Man is to be revealed. Do you love His Word? Now, some of you think you may not need this, but you need this more than you need to live. That's right. Hallelujah. Your carnal mind is never going to be the judge anything. 
But there is one judge of heaven and earth. And he will certainly take this same Bible and judge you. Praise God. I was like, well, I'm bored getting the Holy Ghost and you won't be. Well, I'm waiting for you to do your thing, Brother Freddy. I'm not going to do nothing for you. Do something for yourself. You're grown up. I said, you're mature. Why should you ride on my coat? I'm having all, all I can do to make heaven myself. You want to hold me back? Say praise the Lord. Wave your hand in victory notes. Glory to God. I love him. Let him that's on the housetop not come down and take his th stuff out of his house. And he that is in the field, let him not return to his house. I don't know what year Jesus is coming. I don't know what year that I won't be able to ever go home and see my house. See my family, see my folks. Are you listening? In the day that the Son of Man is to be revealed, I can't say, hold off, Lord. I want to go take a visit at home before you rapture us. Because if I got my home in order, we'll all meet in the rapture. Say, thank God. Is that right? And if you're wanting to run back from the field, back to the house in the day that Jesus is coming, it's because you haven't prayed through and got your family saved yet. And this will prob probably be the last time you ever see them. Is that right? Here they was. Let him that's in the field not return unto his house, but stay busy for Jesus. That's the message here. Don't let nothing tie you down. Stay busy for Jesus, okay? Now, remember Lot's wife. Can you remember her? Can you remember Lot's wife? She would not, she and Lot would not go to the mountains where they would be safe. She had to go to some little old town over here because it was a little one. And because there was no mountains to obscure her view, she turned around and looked at Sodom and turned into a pillar of salt. Now, somebody said, God won't turn you into something. He's already done it. <laughs> Say hallelujah. If they'd been in the mountains where God had first told them to go, they couldn't have seen Sodom. I'll go you one step further. Abraham woke up in the morning and looked on Sodom and saw the smoke rising up and didn't phase him a bit. He wasn't running from nothing. He was an overcomer to start with. <laughs> Are you happy? Once you turn your back on it, trying to get away and run away from it, don't turn around and gaze and long after it because that old cigarette pack will get you again. <laughs> Say praise the Lord. Someone said, I'm going to take them home and put them on a shelf where I can look at them every day and show the world that I've overcome them. Don't you go play in a fire. Brother, don't you turn to no pillar of salt. Remember Lot's wife. When you turn your back on that, don't even go down that street no more. Don't even head toward that store no more that sells the thing. I don't know where you'd shop. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Remember Lot's wife. And there shall be two in a bed. One will be taken and one will be left. Here's where we get the butler and the baker doctrine right here. One is going to to be taken. But they're asleep, Brother Freddy. I know. Most of the churches I go to sound asleep. <laughs> Hallelujah. They're asleep in the bed. Yes, but God is going to wake one of them up and take one of them. Whoever wants to wake up, I guess. Not everybody nodding at you is agreeing with you, you know. Say <laughs> praise the Lord. You're going to wake one up and take them. And the other one goes, sleep on through it, as did half the church. The five foolish virgins slumbered and slept at midnight when the cry said, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Now, two women shall be grinding at the mill. How many uh, women are here tonight that can vouch for that, saying, This is such an old daily grind, I can hardly stand life in this world any longer. Grinding every day, round and round in circles, at the old daily grist mill, getting nowhere. Well, God is going to take one out of the daily grind and leave the other one to keep on grinding. Hallelujah. How many wants to be the one to get set free from the old grind here tonight? How many wants to wake up in that bed of slumber that you're in and be the one that's going to be taken here tonight? Come on, you butlers, start shouting victory. And if you can't shout, it might be that God's going to put a rope around your neck, you baker, you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. And then two shall be in the field. Uh-oh, getting heavy now. There's a lot of birds out there in the field. 
I said, there's a lot that's on what they call the field. But that don't mean he's going to take everybody that's in the field. So I said, well, I'm getting ready to go on the field for God. Well, you better start in the backyard. Then at the neighbors. No, hold it. Before you get the neighbors, get your own house. Then go to the neighbors. And then if you can uh, do pretty good on your street, go to the next block. After all, let's practice up. We've got to start at the bottom of the totem pole. We don't want to put baked meats in the top basket, do we? No. Say hallelujah. And so a lot of folks are ready to evangelize the world, but they can't keep their own house straight. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Well, how could I rule the house of God if I didn't rule my own house? I wouldn't qualify in fact, if I convinced you that I did qualify, I'd come out here and prove to you that I couldn't handle it. Because there are spiritual principles that have to work only one way. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? And now there's two in the field. Oh, there's a lot out there in the field. But out of two, one of them shall be taken. That means not everyone crying, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom. Now everyone says, I did this in your name and that in your name. and uh, Well... He that doeth the will. Now what it said, he that doeth the will. How many wants to do God's will? Thank God. You can do your own will pretty easy. But there's not much success to it. But he that doeth God's will is the one that shall be taken, though there are two that's in the field. When's all this going to happen? In the day that the Son of Man is to be revealed. And that Son of Man was revealed to Joseph in the jailhouse too. And the butler and the baker were separated. I say, some of you tonight will return to your ministry in this meeting. Others will be hung. But maybe after you hang by the neck until dead and you get good and good and dead then maybe we can have a resurrection here tonight and there might be some hope for you too. Hallelujah. Glory to God. After all, if you're going to be successful you're going to die out to self crucify yourself to the cross with him that old hide might get hung to the barn door it may go against the grain it may grate your nerves it may ruffle your feathers and upset you but after you get hung by the neck until dead then new life always comes where the seed falls into the ground and dies lest it abide alone but if you die you can then break forth and bring forth much fruit so I say tonight, there's two ways to go to glory. Get returning to your ministry or hang by the neck until dead. And after resurrection, then you will be a new creature. You will be a new body then because you're sure not the old body no more. Hallelujah. How many is buried with him in baptism? How many is died with him? I was reading before I came in tonight. It's a worthy saying and worthy of all acceptation. That if you be dead with him, you shall live with him. If you suffer with him, you shall reign with him. <laughs> if you deny him, he'll deny you. Yet if you believe not, oh get a load of this heaviness. If you believe not, yet he abideth faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Brother, if God ever said it, it'll happen. If he ever prophesied it, it'll come to pass. Glory be to God. Hallelujah to God. Aren't you glad tonight? If you're dead of him, you live with him. How many wants to be hung by the neck until dead tonight? You know, that'll stop you from stirring up all these messes. Cooking up and hatching up and batching up all these batches of uh, whatever's. Hallelujah. All the stirring and controversy and uh, uh, all the ingredients all mixed together and just keeping it going, keeping it going. Hallelujah. Agitating away. Come on, Lord. Give me a few ropes. I want to hang a few folks until dead. Hallelujah. When you get dead, maybe you'll resurrect to the kind of a character that God's expecting out of you. But in the meantime, if you're a servant, Mr. Butler... Let me restore you to your ministry tonight. But after all, of all those who are asleep, he's going to wake up one. 
and take him. Of all those that are in the daily grind, he's going to take one out of this old grind. Of all those who claim to be on the field for God, only one is going to be caught up in the day that the Son of Man is to be revealed. So how many is on the housetop tonight? Don't get all boggled down trying to drag things out of your house. You'll be lucky to get there yourself. When we all go, we can't take nothing with us. Just people. Are you looking for souls tonight? They can go. They're the only ones who can go with you. And if you're out in the field, don't go running home to mommy. Boo-hooing and belly aching. Ooh, so-and-so didn't treat me right. They looked at me cross-eyed. They didn't shake my hand. I don't think they love me, Mama. Hallelujah. If you're in the field, whatever field God's put you in, stay there. The Son of Man is about to be revealed. Hallelujah. Get up your hand and let's praise his name. Hot, 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 man, shine. Oh, blessed be God who have blessed us. My Lord, thank you. Glory, glory, glory. Rim sailing me, he took all shine. Hallelujah to God. Praise God, I thank you that people will never be my excuse when I stand before the throne. Lord, why should I let them bother me now? Hallelujah. I can't blame people. It's a one-on-one -on -one proposition when I face my maker. It's between him and I. And it's in the book or it's not in the book. It's as simple as that. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa, thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the precious blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the precious blood. Glory to God. Hadn't found my key, but I'm going to sing it again. Well, thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Help me. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the precious blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the precious blood. How many is washed in it tonight? Glory be to God. Thank God. You know, it's been good to be in this service to now. It is not over with yet. God is going to confirm his word unless you're a little nervous about what he might be going to do for you. If you're nervous about that, maybe you're the one needs your nerves healed. So hallelujah. I love you, Lord. Now, I'm going to pray my first prayer of faith here tonight. And I want to pray for every butler that wants to be restored to your ministry, that wants to be woke up and took up, delivered from the daily grind, and on the field for God, but accepted by God. How many knows there is a difference between being on the field for God and being accepted by God? All butlers tonight, brother and sister butler, would you stand up and get your name changed if you want God to restore you to your ministry? Hallelujah. Are you as tired of sitting on the seat to do nothing? You just seem like you're getting nowhere as fast, just waiting, walking through water, waiting through sand, just uh, barely getting by. God don't want you on a shelf. He don't want you stalemated, checkmated. He doesn't want you just dragging. Why, if you're feeling ineffective, it's time to be delivered from your bondage, taken out of the jailhouse bars, brought before the king, where you can take this cup, the will of God, and put it right into God's hand and say, Lord Jesus, thy will be done in my life. Hallelujah. I believe it won't take three days. It might only take three minutes from now before you're restored onto that ministry that God wants you to perform. Thank God. Get your hands up high. I always pray spiritual prayers first for the soul. God don't care a hoot about your aches and pains like he cares about your soul's spirituality and spiritual condition.
Hallelujah. I guarantee it. You get the soul right and your spiritual man in tune with God. And then your body will automatically get healed. I believe that. Hallelujah, I do. Keep your hands up while we pray. Oh, Jesus. We're praying now for these who were honest enough to stand. God, let these butlers go back where they come from. Put them in the palace of the king. Let them come before the throne boldly to find grace to help in time of need. May they serve you, Jesus. May they take this uh, new wine that we're filled with tonight and place it into thy hand in the cup. Oh, God, we want to serve you. Lord, restore us. We're tired of being bound up, chained inside prison bars. We are breaking out. It's the third day. It's your birthday, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's our birthday. We're being born again into the Spirit of God. And now let us butlers become proper servants. May we not just stay servants, but if we serve you well enough, may we also become sons and daughters of God. Let us know what you're doing. It will thrill us, God. Our your people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. But Lord, our knowledge is coming because as sons we're knowing what you're about to do. Everybody go ahead and rejoice. Thank God. Claim your position. You've been there before. You know how to pray. You know how to assume the responsibility and the spiritual leadership of your life. Brothers, he that rules his own spirit than he that can take a city. Hallelujah. Go ahead and go back to the thing you were doing for God. For the prison bars are broken. Why all the captives are loosed. Why slip on out of your cell tonight and go on into the palace of the king. And start putting this will of God to work for you. Hallelujah to God. My God, I love you. Praise your name, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Lord God Almighty, the whole earth is filled with his glory. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, go ahead and keep praying. Friends, as you travel here in this world so dark and drear, are you wondering what the future holds for you? Just take Jesus by the hand, every word you understand. Who oh, in your heart knows no turning from the way. Old, old, old song here I'm singing to you. Well, my heart knows no turning for heaven. I am yearning for the day when Jesus calls his people home. While I pay shortly wait, he'll swing wide the golden gate for my heart knows no turning from the way. I see people making shipwreck of their lives that have been faithful for years, fallen by the way. Makes me sad. How could you trade any carnality or the things of the flesh for what you once had a glimpse of on the other side? I don't understand that. Why would you kick over the milk bucket and blame circumstances and everybody else? You may have had a hard row the whole, but be faithful to the end and receive a crown of life. Why, we've not all been promised a bed of roses. And I don't care who you are tonight, there's going to be a period of your life that's going to be rough. There's going to be a proven time. It's going to make a man and a woman out of you. That's right. There's going to be a hard way to go. But just don't cop out and say, well, I'd rather follow my feelings and whatever's comfortable. That's what the whole world's doing. There's an easy way out, but there's a hard way to persevere. I want to make it the straight and narrow. Don't cop out. Why, if you walked in the pathway of duty, if you've toiled till the end, of the day here's what you're going to see you shall see the great king in his beauty when you've made it but not until you've gone 
the last mile of the way. Let's make a commitment and a promise to God tonight by singing together. Let us walk the last mile of the way. And then, then I'll rest at the close of life's day. To see that endorf to the end, but she'll be saved, no one else. I'll see there'll be joys that will wait me when I've gone. The last mile of the way. How many wants to make it? Thank God. I want you to go with me. And tonight, you who are standing, do you feel like you've been restored to your ministry? Thank God I've done lots and lots of preaching and talking all this week. My tongue's tired, my jaws ache, but they still feel a realm of truth whelming up within me. Hallelujah. I'm amazed myself at Holy Ghost preaching. There seems to be no end to the scriptures. No end to the truth of the messages. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you satisfied tonight for what he's done? If you are, you may be seated if possible. And if not possible, stay on your feet and keep worshiping. While I sing to you the second verse. I've been discouraged before myself. How many has? Hallelujah. And in the voice of discouragement, another voice overrode it and said, Don't be discouraged, Brother Freddy. Hallelujah. Just don't quit what you're doing. Been 20 years now, and I hadn't quit, and don't intend to quit. Here's the verse If for Christ you proclaim the glad story that's what he told me if you seek brother freddy for my sheep gone astray you're going to see something <laughs> you will see the great king and your reward in his glory oh i said i gotta make it now i plan to run not creep, crawl, or walk, but run the last mile of the way. If you get on the last mile and you see the gates that are pearl, don't you know you'll run? <laughs> when I've run the last mile of the way, I'm talking about persevering tonight. I will rest at the close of life's day. Oh, oh. And I know there are joys that will wait me. Oh, they're waiting on me right now. I plan to run the last mile of the way. How am I going to run with me? Praising God. Well, it's been good. But not all over with yet. I believe God's going to set some of you free. And how many wants to be free? Hallelujah. Oh, we took, I've got a few more minutes. How many can persevere a few more minutes with me here? Anybody sick and tired and bored to death of seeing miracles? Huh? Well, that's about what's going to happen right now is miracles. Somebody, well, you know, that's Brother Freddy talking again, miracles. Some people see miracles and they don't see them. They don't have eyes to see with. You know what God's done for your eyes? He's put scales on them. Isaiah said, go make these people's eyes blind, their ears deaf, and the hard heart, lest they should see of their eyes, hear of their ears, understand of their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. Now, I didn't write the Bible. Don't rear up on your hind legs of me. That's chapter and verse for it. Say amen. So I said, well, I don't have time for a miracle. Well, God will give you plenty of time convalescing there in the hospital. Say hallelujah. Is that right? Ah, you know that's true, don't you? Come and be healed. Glory to God. Oil before Christ. We proclaim 
the glad story. You believe God will heal you tonight? Yes, sir. You need him to, don't you? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hold your hands up to the, in the air to him and look at me. Glory to God. Thank God. There's been something bothering you down through the stomach area of your lower stomach tract, the female organs of your body. Yes. You need them healed tonight, don't you? Yes. God don't heal them, they won't get healed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If this suffering that you've had there, and it has been causing you suffering, if it dissolves and disappears tonight, would that be a pretty big sign that you got healed? Yes, it is. If that was all, I'd quit. Should I quit or pray for it all? Yes. Do what now? Pray. Pray for it all? Yes. Strange how everybody says the same thing. In your lower back, you've been bothered here. A tight band of pain, uh, pressure and tiredness has been sitting in your lower back all the evening. Yes. Huh? There's two things. Someone says, Brother Freddie, how do you know these things? That's not a fair question. God's still on the throne. Hadn't got laryngitis. <laughs> still got tongue in his head. Hallelujah. You're anemic. You're, that means your blood is very low. Yes. Vitamins, all sort of minerals and pills just can't help you. God's going to give you blood transfusion tonight. Do you believe it? Yes. Now, you've also had a smothering come across your chest here. Tightness in your breathing. Yes. Hard to get a deep, easy breath. God's healing that. Glory to God. Come step out here with me. If, O oh Christ, you proclaim the glad story, you know what'll happen? God will back you up. Never make a monkey out of you. Never let you down. Never fail you. Never forget to uh, confirm the things you say and do. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? Praising God. You're getting ready to be healed. Thank you. You'll know when you are? Yes. Get ready to know it now. Do those insignificant things first, like the pressure from the back. Smother the chest. Bring up her anemic blood up to par, up to normal. In Jesus' name. Now God operate on her because only you can correct this. It's done. Lift. Holy hands to a holy God and praise Him. Hallelujah be to God. Everyone said praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Wonderful Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Tell him big thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just take a few steps of faith there, just a little faith walk. If for Christ you proclaim, press in of your hands now firmly from both sides. What has happened? Can you tell? Just no. It just feels good. It just. Feels good? Yeah. Don't hurt you now? No. Is it sore? No. Sensitive? Tender? Sort of, yeah. Little sensitive? Yeah. Get your hands up and praise God two, three more times. Maybe I can get you some help here tonight. Praising God. Oh, there you are. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. When I'm gone, oh, the last smile. Of the way, hallelujah. Hey, little sister, see what happened to your lower back now. Would you check your lower back? Sir? That pain in you now? No. <laughs> Been sitting here in the chair tonight with a backache down there. Yeah. Where'd it go? Away. <laughs> Away. <laughs> you feel that little warm heat throughout your body? Yeah, I'm sweating. <laughs> Are you? A while ago, you were just as cold. And that's because your low blood is up. You're not anemic no more. And when the warm heat passes through the body, that's a sign of a blood transfusion. Or it has been in our ministry for 18 years. Your blood's healed. Thank you. Deep, breathe deep now. 
Any choking, smothering there? Tightness? No. Now, getting back to the original main problem, press in and see if there's any sensitivity or soreness whatsoever this time. Feels better. Would you say you've been operated on? Yes. Successfully? Yes. You examine yourself tonight and find there'll be no incision, no stitches, no thread, no charge. <laughs> Go in peace. Faith of Major Hole. When I've gone the last mile of the way. I will rest at the close of life's day And I know there are joys that do wait me Waiting on me now Someone in this section is suffering in your left ear Your left ear is bothering you If you rise straight up, God will open it up Hallelujah You open your ear The problem you've had with your ear will be restored Someone said, well, there's bound to be someone like that in a crowd this size because the law of averages says the law of averages is nothing. The diagnosis don't mean a thing. It's the cure that means everything. Come on. I was getting ready to pray for you next anyway, so I'm glad, you, I'm glad it was you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> what happened to your ear? Nothing really. It's just been popping for the past year or so every once in a while. Kind of aggravating, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, would you know when it opens up clear to stay? Oh, yeah. I think you'd know that. Oh, yeah. Well, then get your hands up and be ready to know it, because it's about to happen, and you have just about five seconds to enjoy that old ear condition. <laughs> Hallelujah. Someone said, why don't you pray again? Why should I? It's done. Said the work's done. Hallelujah. How many felt it when it, went, uh, when it was done and when it did happen? Oh, uh, you feel the power of God, don't you? Oh, yes. Now, maybe no one else has tonight, but he is now. What, uh, what went on in your ear there? Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just shaking all over. You're shaking all over? Oh, yeah. I've never seen the Holy Ghost come on somebody yet, but what, something didn't happen. Is your ear loud and clear? Uh, yeah. It's not popping or closing? Or? Well, it would do it when I'd hit, you know, hear high-pitched sounds. It would pop every once uh, uh, High-pitched, loud or high? High-pitched word. Praise the Lord! <laughs> any popping? No. I don't think you'll ever hear any popping. Because you heal. You want your bonus before you leave? Yes. You have a little sinus blockage. Comes in through here. Stops up in your nasal. Nostrils breathing. Want that open? Oh, yes. You're, you've been tired yourself in body. Tired. Your blood's only about three points low, but it is a little low. It needs to be built up. Okay? Hallelujah to God. Get in the blood. There's the warm heat rising in your body. That's your sign that your strength is back. The life of the flesh is in the blood, you know. Isn't that a scripture? God told that to Moses long before the doctor ever discovered it. Open the nasal nostril sinus breathing. It's clear. It's done. Oh, it's a God. Oh, it's a God. Any clear? Is that good enough? <laughs> if it's open, that's good enough. You feel the warmth? Yeah. Go in peace. Hallelujah. I'm hurrying here because I know right now that your faith's where it ought to be practically. So I'm going to pray for uh, lots of you. Hallelujah to God as fast as possible. Have I prayed for you yet? Uh, no. Well, stand. I'll pray for you now. Glory to God. Amen. Hold your hands up to God. Now, your ears don't pop on you, but they're just a little bit of a dullness. Gets into your hearing. Let us see now, it's just you're a little worse than this ear right there. 
That being your, well, there it is again, the left ear. But that's going to come louder. You believe it will? Uh, yes, I do believe it. There will. are some people that talk to you, and sometimes they repeat themselves, repeat themselves constantly. And that's because just a little dullness is in the hearing. Amen. God's going to open that now. Glory. Now I'm going to pray for it all. There's a little pressure that builds up in your head here. Let's see. It comes from your blood. It's your blood pressure. It goes just two or three notches high. That's coming down too. Does that make you happy? Yes, it makes me very happy. Keep your hands up. You have a little sinus blockage through that. It's worse on one side. That again is your left side. Hmm? Yes, it is. God's going to clear that. You've got a place in your back that slips out on you right there. Strains the lower part. The last three lumbars down here are affected by it. God's going to put that back in place. That threw you? I broke my pelvis four times. You did? Yes, sir. Well, no wonder it slips out. Hallelujah. God is going to heal it for you. I want to make sure I have it all. That's why I'm going a little slow here. God. The leg aches are going to leave you too, especially when the weather is cold and damp. It penetrates into your legs. God's going to take those leg aches away, and you can't use your legs for barometers no more to tell the weather by. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God heal him. My Lord, let him be free. God, let these legs be free. All the suffering aching. I'll let me call train punches, Blood pressure go down. Sinus open on both sides, especially the left side, and take the downness from both ears, particularly the left ear. In the name of Jesus, let it unstop. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's open now. It is open, yes. Thank you, Jesus.